John Wick is an interesting series of movies. A series of movies that has been attempting to create a franchise for a while, and through that attempted creation, there's a comic series known as John Wick. It's also known as John Wick's Origin. As far as I know, it is in proper continuity. So, today we're going to be covering the John Wick Origins right here at the Comic Storian channel, and if you're wondering where you are, well, you have found one of those weird parts of YouTube. You see, we take a lot of your favorite pop culture icons, from movies to video games to comic books, and we break down the lore behind the stories. We tell you how we got there. We turn it into an audio drama, and we allow you to experience it, to allow you to keep up with your favorite pop culture icons. If you enjoy what you're about to hear, please consider subscribing. And if you really want to chat with me about John Wick Chapter 3 or any of your favorite comic books or video games, consider going to our Twitter and following us at Comic Story. But it's time for me to begin the story of John Wick, his origins. As the sun begins to set over the city of El Paso, John Wick stares at the dessert display through the window of a diner. A loud man walks before him, and John follows as the man seats himself with whoever he was meeting. The waitress from behind the counter asks what she can get for him, and just as John goes to respond, stating that he would like to try some pie, the man from before shouts, Who got here first, huh? The waitress sighs, telling John that if he would like somewhere quiet, she'd recommend the counter. She'll be right with him in a moment. So John looks over the menu, and he hears the man and the woman that he was meeting discussing something. The man mentions an address, and if that's what Pecos wants to do tonight, they can. The woman sets the plate down before John, and the man shouts, What the hell? How long does it take to burn a piece of meat around here? What are you looking at, pie boy? John turns to look, but the waitress tells him that she doesn't want any trouble. It's supposed to be quiet, right? She turns to grab the man's food, but before she can bring it to him, he yells, You know what? Just forget about it. You took too damn long, and I got places to be. Later that night, John heads into the town to rent a hotel room, right next to the address the man from before said. The hotel manager walks John to his room on the third floor and states that if he would like, cooler on the ground floor. John looks out the window, telling him, No, this will be fine. It's much more quiet up here. As John stands there, he thinks back to 12 years earlier, with a young John laughing as he runs down the street with three men chasing him. One of the men chasing him holds his hat, stating, Nobody messes with the three bills! This is your fault, Pecos! Pecos lets out a light laugh, stating that it's just a couple of grand, Buffalo. Besides, the kid is funny. Just watch him go. Buffalo starts to shoot at John, and as John gets closer to the fence, he hops on a car and jumps over. Buffalo starts to shout that the punk is getting away, and then a female voice tells him to calm down. She's got this. A second later, the shattered woman fires an RPG, setting off a massive explosion. That fire spreads through the small group of makeshift shacks as the people living there scream as they run out. Peko starts to laugh as he shoots the people trying to escape, and all John can hear is the laughing and the gunshots. Back in our current time, though, John wakes up after hearing a meow, and he looks across at the next building, where a cat sits there looking at him. A few moments later, Sharon looks back, and there's a sudden crash. Within seconds, a group of men storm the room, all pointing guns at Sharon. He looks back, and John begins to crack his knuckles. He picks up a cushion from the sofa, holding it to his chest, jumping through the window towards the next building. As the men all begin to hold out their guns, John crashes through, quickly disarming the first man in reach. Before anyone else can pull the trigger, John fires a shot into one of the men, moving one by one, taking them out. The man seemingly leading the group begins to take off, so John shoots him in the shoulders, throwing the gun, hitting him in the back of the head. As he begins to stand there, he hears the click of a clip being loaded into a gun, and he sees the loud man from the diner. So John kicks the man in the face, so the man quickly begins to beg him not to shoot. John tells him, I'm not here for you. I'm here for Pecos. Pecos begins to stand up, asking, Who the hell are you? John grips his pistol tight. Twelve years ago, Mexico. Pecos realizes what is going on. No. Oh God, no, Johnny! Th that ain't you! Look! You've all grown up! You're, you're looking great, Johnny! He slowly begins to inch towards his gun, reaching for it. I've always liked you! So did Billy and Buffalo! <laughs> Damn! We should all meet up! They'll be happy to see you, Johnny! Pecos grabs his gun, pulling it up, getting ready to pull the trigger, but John charges at him, unloading an entire clip into Pecos' chest before he falls to the ground. John then reaches down, pulling out Pecos' cell phone, and he asks Sharon if he's okay. Sharon tells him, I'm alright, Mr. Wick. John responds, telling him, Hello, Sharon. And Sharon responds, telling him, It's been a very long time. Are you in the business? John tells him that it was personal. And Sharon tells him, I see. If you'll excuse me for just a moment. Sharon walks over to the loud man, and the man shouts, You came for Pecos, right? This has nothing to do with me. Sharon tells him, that is correct. 
Mr. Wick came here to collect, but I still have something to do. The man jumps for his gun, but Sharon fires his gun, shooting all of the remaining men in the head. Sharon then wipes his gun off, telling him, I'm sorry, but I couldn't help it over here. Mr. Pecos mentioned other shared acquaintances, Buffalo and Billy. They're both members of the local Continental. Thus, they'll have a considerable advantage over you if you choose to pursue them, Mr. Wick. Before it wasn't possible, but now at your age and current helpfulness, perhaps you would like to be reintroduced to the institution. You would be expected to learn and obey the house rules, of course. Later as the two leave, an officer walks up asking if everything is good. Sharon hands him a gold coin, telling him, Absolutely. Please allow me to introduce you to John Wick. But as the interaction goes, the woman that was with the loud man from before makes a call, telling Maria the heist failed. Pecos is dead. Everyone's dead. Maria tells her to calm down, just give her a name. Elsewhere in the ballroom of the mansion, Maria hangs up the phone and turns to the crowd, stating, There's a freelancer in our town that hasn't been properly introduced yet. Who here would like to help me kill? John Wick. Back with John and Sharon, the two walk up to a large hotel and Sharon tells John that it is his pleasure to welcome him to the continental El Paso. It might not look like much, but he can assure him the inside is much nicer. Sharon leads John into the back through a locked door. He goes on stating that this is where their clientele stands. The door opens up to a much nicer lounge area. And Sharon explains that there are few rules that they live by here. First, no business on the grounds of the hotel. John asks, business? Sharon tells him that anything that requires an unscheduled dinner reservation. But before Sharon can go on, Maria interrupts asking if she may have a moment with John Wick. John says, of course. And he sits down as Maria tells him that some of her men have spoken favorably about his skills. Some were so impressed by their encounter that they are unable to speak at all. In fact, she fears that they may never speak again. Suddenly, the sounds of guns being cocked can be heard. And Sharon says, Mr. Wick is a guest of the Continental. As long as he is here, he enjoys the protection afforded by the rules. He will abide by those same rules. Isn't that right, Mr. Wick? John releases the grip of his gun, stating, Of course. Sharon then turns to Maria, telling her that there is something that he must address. Earlier, he was attacked. May he ask, does she still employ Pecos? She opens up her purse, pulling out a stack of gold coins, stating that he has her apologies. She should have said this before, but Pecos went rogue. He was operating without any authorization from anyone in her organization. The Russians would never attempt to interfere with an employee of the Continental. Maria then pushes some of the gold coins towards John, stating that she appreciates him taking care of her little problem. If he is looking for work, she would like to discuss things further. John tells her thank you, but he's freelance. Only in town for a short while, Pecos was a personal man. Maria says that she understands, please consider this a gift, not a payment, free of any obligation. Later that night, John heads out and hears a message come in on Pecos' phone. He reads the message from Buffalo asking if everything's all right. He heard he got shot. John responds, yeah, he got shot. It was John Wick, that kid from Mexico. Billy hired him. Billy has always been crazy, but he's probably next. Watch your back. Once the message goes out, John then starts a new message to Billy telling him the exact same thing, except that it was Buffalo who hired John. Shortly after that, John heads into a building where Buffalo and Billy's men meet. All the guns pointed at each other. The two groups call their bosses asking what they should do, and Buffalo calls over to Billy asking, what the hell's going on, Billy? Billy then asks, what are you talking about? And Buffalo tells him, Pecos said he was trying to kill him. And Billy says, no, Pecos said that you were trying to kill me. Back inside the building, John drops an empty can on one of the men, and as it startles him, he fires his gun. Soon, everyone begins to shoot at each other, taking most of the group out when two cars crash into the building. Buffalo and Billy step out of the car, stating that they were all just played. They gotta team up and kill John Wick. So Buffalo aims up to where John was, and as soon as he fires, everyone else begins shooting in the same direction. As the bullets spray the wall, there's a loud bragoom as one of the pipes are hit. Buffalo says, hot damn, we hit a gas line. But did we get? And just then, one of the men shouts, there! Everyone turns to fire, but all they can hear are the clicks of empty clips. Buffalo tells his men to hurry up and get back to the car getting ammo. But standing on that car is John, holding a pipe. He looks at them. Hey, you guys didn't change much, huh? He jumps down into the middle of the men, swinging and taking out everyone that he can. As one of the men goes to the car, they open up the door, and John kicks the door shut on the man's head. As the last of the thugs fall, Buffalo and Billy escape through the hole in the wall, with John following, stating, Someone did change. It was me. 
Just up ahead, Buffalo and Billy run to get away at their car, shouting to their men to get ready and make sure nobody walks down the street and lives. Just as he says that, everyone hears the sounds of screeching tires as John speeds through, driving straight towards the group of thugs. John rams into one of their cars, flipping over, but as Buffalo starts to laugh, he notices that there isn't anyone inside of John's car. With everyone focused on the wreckage, John walks up from behind, shooting several men, but he ends up taking two hits before finishing off the last guy. From behind one of the cars, Billy shouts, asking, What the hell do you want? And John unloads another clip, stating, You blew up a village. 53 people died. Buffalo yells, I'm gonna stop you right there. It wasn't us. It was Calamity. You remember her, right? She's the crazy one. Back then, we weren't even going to hurt you. We just wanted back what you stole, but Calamity, she saw you running and couldn't help herself. But you don't have to worry about her. We took care of her. Calamity wasn't good for no one. It's done. John tells him, yeah, but no one took care of you. He leaps over the car, shooting more of the guards. And just as the men go for their guns, John grabs him by the wrist, throwing him into the group, and he starts to open fire. A little bit ahead, Billy asks, what are we going to do? He ain't going to stop. We need help. And Buffalo mumbles to himself, stating, all right, there's only one person that we can call. John starts to give chase to the two of them, but as he checks himself for his own rounds, a car pulls up next to him. The window rolls down, and a hand reaches out with an invitation from Maria. The man inside asks if he could have a moment of his time. A short while later, John heads back to the Continental holding his sign, and he sits down, stating, Maria. She shuffles a deck of cards, stating that it's a pleasure to see him, but first, down to business. She's not generally in the habit of making an offer twice, but she's made some calls and he's still not affiliated with any of the primary operators. She starts to lay out the cards going on, telling him, Everyone knows about you and your impressive talents. Each company will soon attempt to acquire your services or remove them completely. She writes a check, sliding it across the table, stating, We can offer you benefits and security for being an employee. John looks down at the amount on the check and he tells her, I appreciate your offer, but like I said before, I'm a freelancer. He gets up and he begins to walk away with Maria sighing, stating, I at least had to give it a try. Guess it's time to move on to the next. She gets up, walking into the next room, stating that she apologizes for the wait. Are you markers ready? Across the room, Buffalo and Billy state that they owe her. John Wick just about had them. The two take out a small metal device, prick their thumbs, stamping the inside of it with blood. Buffalo says that they are now indebted to her. So she takes the marker, stating that they are. Now for the favor she wishes for, they need to kill John Wick. The two shout asking, what the hell? We just gave you our markers to get away from Wick. How are we supposed to kill him? Maria tells them that they are the last of the three bills, but they do have an ace in the hole, don't they? Or is she misinformed? Buffalo says that's not a good idea. She holds up the marker, stating that they know the rules. They are bound to deliver. Later, in a hidden away mental facility, Billy asks if they're really gonna do this. And Buffalo opens up the door, stating that they gave her their markers. They don't have a choice. Dr. Baines sees the two coming in, telling them that it's so nice to see them. She regrets to inform them, though, that there hasn't been any improvement since they last came. Buffalo looks through the window on the door and says, That's good. We're kind of looking for the old Calamity anyway. Inside of the room, Calamity sits with all of her drawings of killing people, stating, Oh, that sounds like fun. Later, back at the Continental. John sits in his room, digging out the bullets, thinking back to the fateful day in Mexico. He heard the screams of his friends trapped under the burning rubble, and just before he could run over it and pull them out, there was an explosion setting everything on fire. But before he could dwell any further, John hears a knock at the door, and Jerome says that they have a special delivery from the Continental, a doctor. As the doctor begins to stitch up John, Sharon says that he also came to inform him of something. He learned that Buffalo and Billy have acquired a new asset. They'll be looking for him, but they have broken some rules. This kind of situation will take care of itself in due time, so it might be better for him not to. But just then there's a beep, and another beep, and another beep. Sharon and the doctor look at John as he pulls out Pecco's phone and it continues to beep. He opens up a message thread and the first message is from Calamity telling everyone that she's back, looking for some hard workers with cleaning experience. The contract is John Wick. First come, first serve. Sharon looks at his phone, stating that that is their new asset. She is generating considerable interest. The Continental can provide discreet transportation out of, but John tells him, no. He looks out the window, seeing all the people getting ready to move in on him, stating, that won't be necessary. I've got everything that I need right here. A few moments later, one of the assassins reports that there is no sign of a wick. 
But if he does this job alone, he gets the full premium, right? But before he could answer, John grabs him from behind, snapping his neck, taking the knife strapped to his chest. One of the assassin's friends begin to run up, but John whips his arm back, throwing the knives into the man's throat. He then begins to disarm and kill each of the assassins one by one, and finally shoots the bomb an assassin is carrying in a stroller. He then begins to walk through the fire with the remaining assassins beginning to scatter. He throws the assault rifle that he took and then he hears tires squealing behind him. So he reaches for his pistol. He aims at the car and Maria steps out holding her arms up yelling, Don't shoot! I'm only here to talk! John stares and Maria goes on telling him, Calamity's methods may seem inefficient, but she is one of the most effective cleaners around. Now if you were under my protection, you wouldn't have to worry about these things, John. John tells her, I'm not interested. And he begins to walk away. But Maria's driver whispers that he could end this right now, just one shot and... But before he could finish, he's shot in the head by John Wick. Maria looks back telling John, well, you have a good evening. And John continues on his way. A short while later down the street, John begins to hear a massive explosion going off in one of the nearby buildings. The people inside begin to scream and run out and Pecco's phone begins to ring with Calamity stating, it's just like old days, huh? We should finish this up and do it right this time. John jumps onto a bike, speeding to where Calamity and the others are, firing up, trying to hit them. Calamity starts to laugh as she aims her RPG, but as she gets her footing on the ledge, the stones begin to shatter, throwing her off her balance. The RPG hits close to John, but he stops to take aim, and then there's a thunk right by his foot. Once Calamity's grappling hook buries itself into the ground, Calamity then jumps onto the wire, opening fire on John as she slides down. Just as Calamity gets to the ground, John turns the bike around, speeding away. He turns the corner with Pecco's phone going off, and John answers, Hello, Sharon. Sharon tells him that he apologizes for the presumption, but he wanted to let him know that the situation has escalated and requires interventions of other parties. No one in the business wants this kind of chaos. Those responsible will be disciplined. His recommendation would be to ride away. If he is after Buffalo, Billy, and Calamity, then he has already won. John tells him, I'll be sticking around to make sure. And Sharon tells him, of course, good luck, Mr. Wick. As John turns back and opens fire, Calamity charges at him, shooting and hitting John in the leg, causing him to spin out. The bike shoots past Calamity as she is laughing, but soon Billy jumps down shooting, stating, you're not so tough now, are you? As he lands, John kicks up dust into his face, disarming him, pointing the gun at his head. Just then, Buffalo calls up to John, stating that they should take it easy for a moment. He lets Billy go or Calamity will blow the heads off of all these people. They both know that she'll do it too. They've seen her in action. John yells to Calamity that she doesn't want to do this. And Billy scoffs telling him that he can't talk his way out of this one. She's always been like this since she was little. Hell, they found her in a box in Waco. Like literally in a box. One of the hostages begs for them to be let go, but Calamity presses the tip of the hot barrel into the old man's face asking, "Aw, does that hurt? He groans, yes. And Calamity tells him, Aw, it looks like it, but don't worry, it won't for much longer. John cracks Billy across the face with the butt of a gun, throwing him over, telling him, It's their rules. Now let the hostages go. Buffalo tells him, Our rules don't mean squat to a freelancer. You got one minute to drop your guns, John. But elsewhere, Maria gets a phone call and she answers, Mr. Wick, John tells her, You offered me a job. I'm reconsidering the position. She leans up from her sofa, telling him, Well, well. A few moments later, Buffalo's phone goes off and he asks Maria what does she want? Wait, what? You hired us to- No, that's crazy. We aren't just gonna- Just then, the police arrive and one of the officers jumps out telling Buffalo and the others to let the hostages go. And Buffalo yells, We has a deal! And the officer tells him, You still do. But you're supposed to kill John Wick, not the whole damn city. Good luck. Once the hostages are clear, John starts shooting and hits Billy in the shoulder and Buffalo in the leg. Buffalo shouts out in pain, then grabs Calamity, holding a gun to her head, yelling, It was Calamity that killed all those people back in Mexico! She's the one you want, John! Calamity whips her head back, breaking Buffalo's nose, jumping behind him, grabbing a gun. Billy spins back to shoot Calamity, but as he pulls the trigger, John shoots him in the arm, causing him to shoot Buffalo in the head. Calamity starts to laugh and shoots Billy, but before she can fire again, John knocks her in the head. She coughs for a while, laughing, <laughs> Hot damn, that was pretty fun. Now what are you waiting for? Don't think about getting soft on me because I will put you in a box! She starts to pull the trigger, but once John fires, Calamity closes her eyes. Later, at the Continental, John walks through the front doors and Jaron says that he will call the doctor. Maria tells him it won't be necessary, they will take care of him. And John asks, take care? 
Maria says, yes. Yes, just like that. Care for a drink, Mr. Wick? As the two sit, John says that she set the whole thing up. She's the one who sent Buffalo and Billy after him. She tells him, of course she did, but he saw it coming. He played her as much as she played him. However, they both got exactly what they wanted. He came for the three bills and then got a taste for something more. Where did he plan on going after this? Leave this beautiful life behind? No, this is where you belong, Mr. Wick. You're not like Calamity or the Bills. You want a little structure, rules, order, anything to make it a little easier to justify what you were made to do. Welcome home, John Wick. For only a dollar, you too can save a puppy in need and help Comic Storian. So that's like two dollars. Either way, for only a dollar, you can come on over to our patreon.com slash comic story and page where you can join us and help support us whenever YouTube is a huge problem. It's there that you get early access to a lot of our videos, sometimes videos that don't come out for two weeks. You also get access to all five of our podcasts in one location. We've tried really hard to create our patreon.com slash comic story and page to be its own separate platform where you just get extra content and early access so you don't feel like you're just giving us a dollar for nothing. We, you want to support us and we want to make sure you get your money's worth. Thank you if you do want to go do that and I hope to see you on the rest of the Patreon stuff. I'm rambling!